So we've all been there. You've decided you wanna upgrade your gaming setup with a nice monitor. And when you start looking around, you see all these crazy long titles full of specs. You start to wonder if you even know what you're doing. Well, regardless of how little you know about gaming monitors, I can promise that by the end of this video, you're going to know everything you need to buy the perfect monitor for your setup and not overspend on a bunch of bells and whistles that you will never actually use. So let's dive right in and start with the screen size. What size should you be looking for? Now, bigger might seem better, but it's essential to consider your space and where you'll be sitting. For most PC gamers, 24 to 27 inches is the sweet spot. And that's just because the average desk setup allows for an ideal viewing distance for these sizes. You don't have to turn your head too much, but you should also consider that uh, monitors within this range, 24 to 27 inches, they usually have the best balance between cost, performance, and visual quality. So just a nice ROI in price. Now, if you have room for something larger, ultra wide monitors can really ramp up your gaming experience. However, if you go beyond 27 inches, you might wanna consider a curved monitor. This is just because a curved screen helps maintain a more consistent viewing distance from the edges to the center of the screen. It reduces the need that you like need to turn your head excessively, stretch your eyes over to the corners. And as a rule of thumb, once you're looking at displays around 30 inches or larger, that's where, in my opinion, a curved monitor can be a worthwhile upgrade just to create a more comfortable and immersive experience. The big reasons to go for a bigger display include wanting more screen real estate for multitasking or having a larger field of view in your game or simply enjoying a more cinematic experience when watching movies or playing story driven games. Next, let's talk about resolution. Resolution refers to the number of pixels on the screen. The three common options you will see are 1080p, 1440p and 4K, also known as FHD, QHD, and UHD. This goes without saying, but the higher the resolution, the sharper your picture will be, but that also means more demand on your GPU. While 4K does offer the best picture quality of the three, the jump in cost and performance requirements might not be worth it for everybody. Typically, if you want to play a game in 4K, you're gonna need a beefy GPU. If you don't even know what your GPU is in your PC, a quick way to find out is to open the start menu by hitting the Windows key, then type in DXDIAG and hit enter. That will bring up a window with a bunch of information about your PC and you will be able to see your GPU by clicking on one of the display tabs and you'll see that GPU listed right there at the top. With that information, you can then go to Google and type in the game you're wanting to play, followed by something like system requirements. And almost every game will have a page like this that breaks down exactly what you need for the type of performance you are looking for. So if your PC isn't up to par with the listed specs, you'll be wasting your money if you are buying a 4K monitor. Now you might be wondering who on earth is buying a 1080p monitor in 2023? Well, the most obvious group of people is those on a tight budget. 1080p monitors are usually more affordable and because your GPU won't be bogged down by trying to produce a super high resolution image, it can use those resources to deliver deliver a lot more frames per second, which we'll talk about in a minute. The other group of players, believe it or not, is competitive esports players. When your number one priority is to win, you don't care so much about how detailed the picture is. So even if you have a beefy GPU and all that, a 1080p monitor will be able to better utilize those high refresh rates, making you a lot more competitive. The sweet spot of resolutions is often considered to be 1440p, as it offers a much better picture picture than 1080p without the huge performance demands of 4K. Monitors with 1440p resolution are also considerably more affordable than 4K gaming monitors. 90% of the time when I give a recommendation to someone for a gaming monitor, it's for a 1440p resolution. Now let's talk about refresh rates. Refresh rates are measured in Hertz and it's the number with an HZ next to it when you're reading a title. And it's one of the most critical specs for a smooth gaming experience. 
Common refresh rates you'll see are 60 hertz, 144 hertz, 165 hertz, and 240 hertz. Refresh rate is closely related to frames per second. You also see FPS sometimes in writing. And that is the number of frames that your GPU can render per second. Your monitor's refresh rate essentially dictates the maximum FPS it can display. So a 60 hertz monitor can display up to 60 frames per second. A 144 hertz monitor can display up to 144 frames per second. If your GPU is capable of rendering more frames per second than your monitor's refresh rate, you may experience screen tearing and that's where multiple frames are being displayed at the same time. And it just creates a really disjointed image, but very easy to fix. A lot of times it's fixed and you don't even realize it. We'll talk about how that fix happens in just a second. Now it is important to note that if you see a 4K monitor that seems really affordable, it's likely because that monitor is a 60 Hertz monitor, which is perfectly fine for video editing or watching movies, but it's not ideal for gaming. The sweet spot for most PC gamers is 144 Hertz as it's noticeably smoother than 60 while being achievable by most GPUs on the market. I shouldn't say most, I should say a lot of them. If you do really want a 4K monitor for gaming, look for one with a refresh rate of at least 144 Hertz. Unless you're a console player, then all you need is 120. However, if you are a competitive player and you need things fast as possible, you might want to aim for a 240 Hertz or even higher. Just remember that achieving these high refresh rates at higher resolutions like 4K or even 1440p, they require a powerful GPU along with some other stuff. And that can be quite demanding on your system. In other words, be prepared to spend some moolah. Another important thing for gaming monitors is the response time, which is measured in milliseconds. You'll see a little MS there next to a number. This refers to the time it takes for a pixel to change from one color to another. And this affects ghosting and motion blur in fast paced games. Faster response times are obviously better. I would say five milliseconds is really the highest you wanna go for a, a good gaming monitor. And if you are a competitive player, you wanna be aiming for that one millisecond or less. When browsing gaming monitors, you will often come across these two terms, G-Sync and FreeSync. These are variable refresh rate or VRR you'll see sometimes, technologies that are designed to enhance your gaming experience by reducing screen tearing and stuttering, like we just talked about. G-Sync was developed by NVIDIA, while FreeSync was developed by AMD, and these are the two largest GPU manufacturers in the market. G-Sync is generally considered to be the better of the two, but uh, it's only compatible with NVIDIA graphics cards. That's the big problem there. NVIDIA also charges manufacturers to incorporate their technology, which is why monitors with G-Sync tend to cost a little bit more. On the other hand, FreeSync is an open standard created by AMD. It's free to use, uh, so it makes it widely available, it's more affordable, and it works with all GPUs regardless of the manufacturer. That's why most gaming monitors you see will at least have FreeSync. So if you have an NVIDIA card and you're choosing between a FreeSync and a G-Sync monitor, with all things being equal, G-Sync is the better option. But it is important to note that all gaming monitors are compatible with these graphics cards. Doesn't matter which one. Just because you have an AMD card doesn't mean you can't use a monitor that has G-Sync. It just means you won't be able to take advantage of the G-Sync technology, but the monitor itself will still work. Now let's discuss panel types. You've got IPS, TN, VA, and now even OLED panels. IPS panels provide excellent color accuracy and wide viewing angles, but they might have slightly slower response times. TN panels are generally faster and cheaper, but the color reproduction and the viewing angles often aren't as good. VA panels offer better contrast and deeper blacks, but their response times and color accuracy might fall between IPS and TN. OLED screens, on the other hand, are a newer option we're seeing in the gaming monitor space, and they deliver outstanding color accuracy, nice contrast, deep blacks. And this is all thanks to the ability for every single pixel to be controlled. However, these types of displays are still on the expensive side. Most gamers tend to prefer IPS displays because they offer a good balance between color accuracy, viewing angles, response times, and most modern IPS panels have improved their response times, making them suitable even for competitive gaming. And they're just priced 
pretty nice most of the time. When choosing a panel type, consider what matters most to you when gaming. So whether that's color accuracy, whether that's speed, contrast, and just choose accordingly. Now let's talk about monitor inputs for a sec. As a PC gamer, it's important to understand the differences between HDMI and display ports. This will help you make smarter decisions when you are shopping. You don't wanna make a mistake and find out that you kind of screwed yourself with the monitor. But as you learn more about them, you can really go down a rabbit hole. So what I've done is I have put together a chart outlining the four most common inputs with the max refresh rate that you will get for each resolution. So take a look at the table, find the best input for your needs. But in short, if you're planning on doing 4K gaming on a, on a high-end machine, I would suggest an HDMI 2.1 input. Otherwise, for pretty much everybody else, having a 1.4 display port will be plenty for your needs. Last but not least, you should know that not all monitors have the ability to be mounted. So if mounting your monitor is something that you want, check the specs to make sure it has a Visa mounting support. I believe that's how you say it, V-E-S-A. Anyway, the 100 by 100 is a pretty common dimension among all these. So you just wanna double check to make sure that your monitor and the monitor arm that you already have or that you're gonna be buying, they both match. If you're wanting some specific suggestions for PC gaming monitors, I would definitely check out techaudit.tv. Makes it super easy to find the best deals on the exact type of monitor you are looking for. For example, right now I can see that this 34 inch ultra wide from MSI is on sale over on Amazon. And it's a great deal for 1440p players who want that immersive gaming experience. But for those who aren't quite into ultra wide gameplay or they, they just want that 1440p goodness at a much cheaper price. This 32 inch monitor from Gigabyte is having a nice deal over at Walmart. And those who really want a solid 4K monitor or even console players can use this 32 inch 4K display from Gigabyte. And this thing has been getting a lot of love from you in the comments. Uh, it's just a great monitor. And despite the higher price than the others, it's still a lot cheaper than what other companies are charging for very similar monitors. Anyway, I will link to those monitors here in the video as well as down in the description. Now, if you're on the fence about whether or not you should get an ultra wide monitor, check out this video here where I used Call of Duty to see which aspect ratio made me the most competitive and the results were very surprising to me. Enjoy.